Jitsu Beam K40 unboxing. You get a nice metal case. Inside, you have the warranty card, the two year warranty. Next, you have an instruction manual with the features and instructions. Then, you have a lanyard which is a bit too long, like a neck lanyard and you definitely won't wear this around your neck because it's too heavy uh, you get some spare o-rings and spare rubber boot cap you get a nice holster that goes over the head and here is the flashlight the soup beam K40 on the bottom right you have the space for Carrying some extra 18650 lithium ion batteries. The flashlight features the Cree XML U2 LED, and there is an anti reflective coating on the lens. There is a control ring to select the eight different modes. You have six outputs by rotating the ring, and a standby, and a strobe mode. Standby allows one hand action. At the tail end there is a texture rubber boot for the forward clicky and it is recessed for tail standing. Inside there is a dual spring setup for the battery carrier. This will ensure constant contact in the event of shock example in weapons mounting applications. There's a dual spring in the tail end also which enables the battery carrier to be inserted from either end. The battery carrier is well made and takes three 18650 lithium ion batteries. The battery carrier doesn't fit flush into the body but it's not a deal killer. The modes are selected by rotating the control ring. There are six output levels. Level six runs at 3.5 amps and reduces after several minutes to protect the lights. Forward clicky switch offers momentary and on and off function. Slight consideration. Because the switch is recessed for tail standing, it's not completely comfortable to press with the thumb. The K40 is waterproof to IPX8 standard. Rain and occasional splash will be no problem for this light. Flashlight comparisons versus a null throw, the Lumen Power D Mini VX Ultra with the turbo head, and also the Dry 3 XML flashlight. The K40 is the heaviest. First, let's compare against the wall. The Lumen Power is on its highest setting, the Dry is on its lowest setting, and we'll put the K40 on its lowest setting as well. And notice you can still see the lowest level 1 setting of the K40 because it's good throw characteristics. And rotating up to level 3, which is similar to the highest level of the Luma Power. Somewhere between 3 and 4. This is level 4. Now rotating to level 6, the K40. Much brighter than the Luma Power and ramping up the Dry 3 XML to Turbo which is the absolute brightest so we'll do a ceiling bounce comparison to compare total output first the Deluma Power on its highest level Next is a dry 3XML on turbo, which should be around 2000 lumens. And last is the K40 on level 6, which is about 1100 lumens. I 
outdoor comparison. This is the Soup Beam K40, ramping up to level 6. It is approximately 100 meters across the pond. The farm building is approximately 260 meters. Next for comparison is the Luma Power. And last is the dry 3XML. And ramp this up to the turbo setting. Now let's compare one on one the K40 on its highest versus the Luma Power on its highest. Next, we will compare the K40 highest level versus the dry 3XML at, at its highest level. Next, we will be doing an outdoor comparison another location. K40 on the lowest, on second, on the third, on the fourth level, on the fifth level, Sixth level. The K Ford has a nice spill that's not too distracting when you're aiming at farther objects. This is the Luma Power on the highest setting. Next is a dry 3XML. Notice the pulsating, that's because it has a PWM, which is the biggest fault of the light. This should be medium. This is high. And turbo. Now let's compare one on one. Got the K40 on level 6 and versus the D Mini Luma Power on the highest. White Pagoda is approximately 100 meters away. Next will be the K40 versus the Dry 3XML, both on the highest setting.
You have been watching the review of the Supreme K40.